We, a group of volunteers from Latin America, inspired by the idea to rediscover our past, have joined our talents with Alatra TV and prepared an important project. Taking this opportunity, we would like to share with you a very interesting work that has been carried out mostly in America. A group of active volunteers on the Alatra TV platform have been working on gathering information in order to tell you about the impressive spheres of Costa Rica. All over the planet, we find not only pyramids or archaeological monuments, but also spherical monoliths. Most of these artifacts either have not been studied or the information about them has not been widely spread, and therefore they are not sufficiently known to humankind. We do not claim to be people of science or experts in this field. We have prepared this material just on our own initiative, wishing to find more answers and to show you the miracle of a megalithic complex. Stones which turned into spheres. A sphere is a universal symbol that we find in nature and in astrology. Used by man at all times and on all continents, in different cultures and civilizations as a means of communication and expression. It is geometric knowledge for different purposes and applications. It also represents what is invisible and what people tried to represent as a symbol, connecting a human being to transcendent ideas and realities. Formed by nature or created by an ancient civilization, these puzzles lead us to look for answers a human being is by nature delved into the search for his origin, especially for everything that somehow unites us and that is unknown for, to us for various reasons. Spheres around the world, mysterious beauties that we find in different places such as In Bosnia, Dr. Samas Managic, a researcher of megalithic and pyramidal complexes, studied these stone spheres. We have found a lot of his works on this subject and also interviewed the researcher from his team, Aydin Ahmed Spagic. Let's watch. Dr. Samas Managic wrote five books called Alternative History, uh, writing about the different uh, locations around the planet, which are proof that our civilization is much older than what the mainstream history is telling us. Dr. Sam was writing in these books that I mentioned before, Alternative History, before the discovery of Bosnian Pyramids, he was uh, writing about uh, stone spheres in Costa Rica and Central America. In Bosnia, as Dr. Sam was talking about the pyramids in 2005 and 6, he got into the attention and people started reading his books. When they started reading his books, they found out that he was talking about the stone spheres. So that he started to get hundreds of uh, calls of local people 
uh, claiming that they have stone spears in their yards, close to their houses. We found more than 20 locations in Bosnia with the stone spheres. Northwest of the country, most of the stone spheres were made out of granite. And we all know that granite doesn't come uh, in this form, in this shape. And uh, perfectly shaped, perfect spheres, two, five, ten tons heavy. Then we found some of them in the south part of the country. They're made of the volcanic material. Then we found some that are in the central Bosnia that are made of the limestone or sandstone. So the explanation that is made by the experts that are actually the ones who are supporting mainstream archaeology and mainstream history cannot be satisfied. We cannot be satisfied with this explanation. Because if there are stone spheres that are made uh, by nature, you know, like they're saying, it's concretion. How come we have stone spheres that are made from four different materials and they can be found in every part of the planet? So as we were researching the pyramids here in Visoko, we also were researching the stone spheres because both of those are connected to our ancestors, to the prehistoric civilization which was obviously megalithic civilization. So we were trying to find the answers. But undoubtedly, the most explored spheres of extraordinary beauty are the spheres of the Dikis Delta in the south of Costa Rica. This place is located in Palmasor in the southeast of Costa Rica, four hour drive away from its capital, San Jose. In different places, we find a huge number hundreds of spheres. These artifacts, the monoliths of spherical shape. About 500 sphere-shaped artifacts were found unofficially registered in 54 locations. But in fact, there are many more of them. Today people continue to find them in this area, but unfortunately many of them have been destroyed. They are as fascinating and mysterious as the pyramids and ancient monuments throughout the planet. According to archaeological research, spheres of the Dikis Delta are not natural formations. These are archaeological artifacts, the creations of ancient civilizations, which at first glance cause great admiration and pride for the incredible work of our ancestors. Along with admiration for their perfect shape, there is perplexity. And big questions arise at this point. By whom? How were they created? And what were they used for? The Dikis Delta is one of the most important places in Central America from the biological and cultural point of view. In pre-Columbian times it was inhabited by Indians, the Baruka tribes of the Dikis culture, to whom archaeology attributes the heritage of spheres. Discovery of spheres the spheres, hundreds of stone balls of different sizes were discovered by accident in 1936 with the arrival of an American company engaged in growing bananas while they were moving banana plantations from the Atlantic to the Pacific area, but they were studied and officially shown to the world only in 1939. Thanks to the first archaeological expedition led by Conchita Turnbull and Jorge Lines. The first scientific publication by archaeologist Doris Stone appeared in 1943. The spheres, full of ancient mysteries, were mostly moved from their original place. About 90% of those found to date have been deliberately destroyed with the intended purpose of finding the hidden treasure or out of curiosity to know what is inside. Right after the spheres were found, archaeologists and scientists from different parts of the world began to arrive. Among them, there was Samuel Lofrov, who in 1948 was able to study the amazing arrangement of one of the groups of balls that were not moved and were located in their original position. Samuel Lofrov depicted their position in a drawing, on which, to his surprise, geometric figures and other drawings were formed. 
Their mutual location resembled a cluster of stars, relying on which people carried out astrological research at that time. Spheres age. It's supposed that since 1500 BC, various tribes or groups of indigenous peoples belonging to the pre-Columbian Diaquist culture have emerged in this area. Among them there was the Baruka, which coexisted with other groups in the region. Precisely, this Baruka tribe is credited with making all the spheres between 200 BC and 800 AD. It took 1000 years of sculptural work, although this is only an approximate time, as it has not been scientifically proven. It should be noted that it is difficult to determine determine the age of the stone spheres using the carbon-14 test or potassium argon dating method. The only thing that can be determined is the age of the rock, which can be thousands or millions of years. But the date when they were turned into spheres cannot be determined. Experts estimated their age based on the archaeological objects from ceramics found in the area, where the spherical monoliths were found. Some archaeologists suggested dating these findings between 200 and 800 AD. However, some dare to assume that they were manufactured 1000 years BC or earlier. The reality is that there are no methods to determine their age unambiguously. We can't know when they were created, and this gives rise to more mysteries about the Dikis Delta. According to research, the spheres were made of three types of rocks or stone. Granodiorites, Gabbro, Limestone. The first two types of stone were mostly used to produce the spheres. Granodiorites and Gabbro are very heavy and hard rocks from the group of granites. They are more stable than limestone, marble, or silicone, so mining for it is more difficult. This type of rock is crystallized from a very slowly cooling magma at great depths under the Earth's crust. What adds to the difficulties is the fact that the raw material was found in deposits many kilometers away from the place where the spheres were found. Knowing this information about their composition, curiosity is growing. What technologies could have been used by the groups of Indians to process the stone and get a spherical shape? In modern times, it is difficult to find the tools by means of which it's possible to achieve the same result. Sizes and weights of the spheres. We find spheres of various sizes, from 10 centimeters to 2,057 meters, with weight from several kilograms to 20 tons. This is the biggest sphere found so far in Costa Rica. It was discovered in the archaeological site of El Silencio. Because of their different sizes and weight, these spheres are considered to have been of particular importance or use. The Location of the Spheres Today Work aimed at discovering these spherical monoliths has been carried out in close proximity to a settlement of indigenous peoples of the Dikis Delta. Since their discovery, most of the spheres have been displaced from their places of origin. There are many places in the southern part of Costa Rica Pacific region where these spheres exist. However, not all areas have been studied well enough. Many of these spheres have been brought to the city of San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica, and are located in museums or important government buildings, while others have been moved out of the country. Some of them have been repatriated but most of them are in popular destinations so that people from Costa Rica and the whole world could admire them. By whom? How were they created? And what were they used for? The Archaeological Society believes that the spheres were created by representatives of the Dikwi culture. But, as it has already been mentioned, despite the conducted research, there are a lot of questions. Therefore, there are suppositions that a very ancient civilization may have existed in the Costa Rica region, hundreds or even thousands of years before the contact with Spaniards, which later disappeared from geography, leaving no trace of its culture. Recent studies provide results that may replace previous conclusions from the studies of Indian settlements in this area of Central America. It is supposed that several of the oldest tribes of the region, such as the Chipsha tribe, 
were influenced by both North and South of the American continent. But this influence was assimilated into their society, acquiring its own characteristics. In other words, we can suppose that the area where the spheres were found might have been inhabited at least 8,000 years ago. It is obvious that the spheres are not of natural origin, so there are a lot of puzzles arising during the study of their production process. Thinking about the time when the monoliths were supposedly created, it is to some extent impossible to imagine the devices and tools that were used to create them. It's still an unknown technique, but archaeologists are talking about some stone technology in the manufacturing of spheres and other artifacts and sculptures. There is no doubt that they had the mathematical and aesthetic knowledge to shape a stone as big as the Dikwi spheres. It is impossible not to take into account the methods and process of transporting stones as a raw material from the deposits to the areas where the spheres were found. This is a distance from 4 to 10 kilometers. The purpose for which these spheres were created is still unclear, but their archaeological community suggests that they might function as attributes of power, hierarchy, economy, or distinctive ethnic features in this region. Another theory is that they were used as astrological orientation during agricultural works. While there also exists a supposition in other spheres of research that the spheres might have had some religious or spiritual significance, or maybe it's an ancient technological device on a global scale. Comparison of spheres found around the planet Besides, these incredible monoliths or spherical artifacts from the Dikis Delta, we know that similar spheres were found all over the planet. Surprisingly, people have recently discovered places with spheres of similar size and weight. It is interesting that they were found at a great distance from each other, scattered on different continents. This encourages us to study more deeply their possible use and function they could have in various ancient civilizations. This is an opportunity to study and understand their worldview on life in the universe. However, there is also a possibility that these spherical bodies could be used in the ways unknown to us for a common purpose or benefit. In many cases, spheres were found in areas adjacent to the pyramids. and the remnants of archaeological monuments of ancient civilizations or in places of rites. But another common feature is water, which is present in almost all places where there are spheres. It is located at a short distance, whether it be a lake, a pond, a river, or a sea. This encourages us to look for more theories and possibilities of how the spheres were used. Therefore, more research is needed. Otherwise, Theories will only remain theories. The Dikis Delta is an example of an ancient culture and civilization possessing profound knowledge that amazes us with its heritage. The spheres of Costa Rica deserve to be recognized, preserved, 
and studied in detail, especially the places where they were found and where, surely, even more spheres will be discovered. It is a matter of priority to preserve the places with spheres, not only due to the fact that this zone is declared a World Heritage Site, but also because of the number of archaeological sites awaiting exploration. This is a story that definitely has not yet ended. These unique and amazing spheres fascinate and excite us, and we as a civilization can be proud of them. They motivate us to continue learning about our past and our origin. But besides this, they also encourage us to ask the following questions. How are the spheres found around the world interrelated? Is it possible that there was a global exchange of spheres between ancient civilizations? Could a sphere be used as an artifact of a lost technology? Why do we need to learn more about our spherical monoliths? Did the spheres have any spiritual significance for our ancestors? Why did we lose the ability to wander at our historical heritage? It is in our human nature to look for answers beyond the limits of what we understood before and what we were taught from the books. That's the motivation that ignites in us the spirit of search. That's the driving force which makes us find the answers in order to build a better planet. A big thanks to all the participants of this project. A big thanks to our friends from Latin America, Bosnia, Ukraine, to everyone who is ready for the next releases and to all viewers who are interested in the topic of ancient civilizations. Let us remember that we are not the first civilization on this planet. We must be proud of our roots, our ancestors and the heritage that ancient civilizations have left to us. It's important to study megalithic monuments, pyramids and artifacts such as spheres and preserve this heritage of humankind. By spreading this knowledge all over the world, we will contribute to studying and preserving them. We invite all humanity to continue the search in their countries. You can participate by visiting archaeologically significant places, pyramids, monoliths, petroglyphs, any signs of time. In addition, through this video you will be able to show the world the wonders that ancient civilizations left to us. These places are like books. If we do not read them, we cannot find answers. We should study our past in order to understand our present and be ready for the future.